Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to my channel Paper Craft Secrets. Today I'm sharing a tutorial for this beautiful set of cards I made for Uniquely Creative using their brand new collection Into the Wild. There's a bit of a backstory behind these cards and it begins with this die here. It's the Uniquely Creative Flourish Frame die and this was a die that I asked Uniquely Creative to make because I love these sort of flourish frame dies and that's what they designed and came up with and so once they created the die they asked if I would make some cards using the die which I did and it was this video here which is a few maybe a year or two old now and I'll link to it on that, this video so you can go to that video and watch that set of cards. So I made a set of three cards using that die. Fast forward to just about a month ago, Tracy contacted me and asked if I would make another set of cards using, well she actually asked if I still had the cards still had the blue cards which I didn't I've given them away as birthday cards um, so I offered to make her some new cards and we she sent me the brand new into the wild collection and I created the cards so what I'm going to do today is talk you through the into the wild collection by uniquely creative and then I'm going to show you the tutorial for how I created the cards so Tracy at Uniquely Creative has sent me a collection of beautiful things here I wanted to share with you. I don't know if you know of the Uniquely Creative collection called Into the Wild. It's a very natural looking collection with some beautiful fussy cutting floral clusters, lots and lots of leaves. Just a very natural page on the back there. Cute little bear and mushrooms. Some pretty whimsical circles. Nice green. This one's called Beautiful Meadow. It's just green with little flowers and then a neutral zigzag. Some silver birch trees. A neutral grey. This one here, it's a very soft mountain range page. I've already used one of those. And on the reverse, it's got this tree pattern. And then you've got the fussy cutting page here, which has got lots of cute little forest animals and trees and flowers and mushrooms. Just a plain neutral page on the back and on this one we've got some sentiments be brave adventure awaits big adventures from little seeds grow mighty trees and a few little bits and pieces that we can fussy cut so that's the 12 by 12 collection pack she's also sent me the little six by six collection pack so let's just take a quick look at that so these are one-sided oh that's cute cute little page some very cute little elements she's asked me to make three cards well I don't know if you remember a long time ago I made three cards with this special die which is the flourish frame die this one here it's one of my favorite dies so I'm going to be using this die again to create three cards I'm going to be using the slimline cards and envelopes from Uniquely Creative. These are very slim cards. The die just fits 
on these cards. So we're going to use the Flourish Flame Frame Die, the Slimline cards. She also sent me um, some arrow dies, some washi tape dies, some cute little stickers, silver stickers. They like they're three dimensional. Now the other really clever die from Uniquely Creative is this one here, which I'm not sure of the name of it, but I think it would be the mini cut apart die, or maybe it's the central die four. And then that fits in to their sentiments. So you can, if you've got this page of Into the Wild mini cut aparts, you can use that die and then cut out all of those sentiments in one go. So I'm going to have a go with that today. There's also these sweet little embellishments wooden embellishments. These are really cute. They like little postage stamp size little elements. They're very cute. So we'll try to use some of those. And we've got this laser cut into the wild laser cut chippy which has got some leaves on it. I thought maybe we could paint those up and use them in the card. She also sent some slimline dies that obviously go with the slimline cards. So these would be a perfect fit for the cards. There's this lovely window one and this one here which is the fancy borders die. So there's so much that I could create. It's going to be hard to choose what to create, what to use and what to work with. Oh, the other thing that she sent, which I forgot, was the, well, the die cuts, the paper die cuts, and I've already got them all out here. I'll just bring them over so you can have a look. So in the paper die cuts, there's these cute little mushrooms and trees and little houses. There's lots of sentiments in the die cuts which are always very useful for birthday cards. There's a larger scrapbooking a title and there's lots of leaves and flowers which are always useful. And lots of love hearts and little arrows. So I'll see whether I use these in the card or not. They're all very cute and these really make creating so easy because everything's cut out for you ready to go so it makes everything super fast. Let's get started now with our cards. Okay so after I had had a little think about what I'm going to create. Um, I decided I've decided that I'm going to make four of these cards and I'm just doing a very simple background. I've chosen four pieces of the paper from Into the Wild collection. These are going to be my background. I've cut these to three and a quarter by eight inches. Then I cut some white cardstock, four pieces at two and three quarters by seven and a half inches. And then I chose this lovely green cardstock, which is the back of that cut apart sheet, two and a half by seven and a quarter inches. I'm going to layer these onto my card. I've also cut out four of these frames just out of white cardstock. I want it to have a white fresh feel to the card so that's why I'm using white. It's one of my favorite colors or accents. I'm going to glue these 
background papers onto the base of each of the cards and I've cut the measurements so that there is a, a nice white border around the edge of the card on the reverse of this pretty rose paper is a nice chevron pattern really like the color green in these papers using this really pretty which way it goes don't think it matters really pretty paper here and then this page so I'm just putting all of those down onto the cards first they were the three and a quarter by eight inch cut The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this green card paper onto the white cardstock and then I'm going to use some cardboard to elevate it for a little more dimension but you don't have to use cardboard if you don't want to. I really like how the white pops in between the green colors. I'm just going to use some cardboard, just a bit of recycled cardboard on the back of each of those little strips. You can use double-sided tape. And then we're going to pop those onto our cards. Let's make sure that they don't move around. That they're nice and straight and in the position that you like. And that is our four cards ready to go. We are going to add our pretty die to the front of each of these cards. And then we're up to our next step, which will be embellishing our cards. Now, very sadly, the next section of my video was a corrupt file. And for whatever reason, it became a corrupt file. I have no idea, but I can't add it into the video. And it was the part where I showed how I clustered the little paper elements and die cuts onto my card um, to create my layered look. And I didn't want to disappoint people with that section of the video being completely removed. So I've just made up a little extra card. I've put the little um, flourish frame die on the front and I'm just choosing some elements from the 12 by 12 sheets that I can use to fussy cut. Now if you have die cuts left over you can certainly use die cuts as I did in the first four cards but as you run low on your die cuts you can use the 12 by 12 image elements on the sheets uh, to fussy cut and create your own die cuts. So you can choose whichever elements that you like the best. There's no right or wrong way of choosing elements. I like a variety of colors and a variety of shapes, but there's no right or wrong way and whatever you like could work for you. It's a personal creative process. I'm thinking this will go in the middle, this will go underneath, this will go underneath at the top, this will go underneath at the side, maybe that can go on top. And then I'm thinking I need an animal because I used animals in the first four cards which created a little bit of interest so I might choose this little bear here which is quite cute. And I actually like that little 
sentiment there. I don't know if it'll be too big or not, but let's give it a try. If it's too big, we can use one of our other sentiments that we have left over. So I'm going to cut out one element on the video for those people that would like to see some fussy cutting and then I'll cut the rest off the video. Here we go. So I'm just cutting around the edge of the image but I'm leaving a little white space in between the line of the image and where I am cutting. You can choose to cut with a little white space or you can choose to cut directly on the line. Cutting directly on the line is a little bit more tricky, but it's a personal preference as to whether you like the white space or you don't. Fussy cutting is a very relaxing meditative task for me. It allows me to slow down a little bit and that's not something I do a lot of. I'm often racing around trying to fit in as many things as I can and so I see fussy cutting as a very healing meditative process that is beneficial to me. You either love fussy cutting or you hate it. I guess it takes a little bit of practice to perfect the task of fussy cutting and the type of scissors that you use play an important role in how well you go with that there we go there's our first element all right so now I have finished cutting all of the elements and I'm going to show you how I put them together so I'm going to use um, some recycled cardboard but you can most certainly use paper um, squares, foam, foam dots, whatever you prefer and we're going to elevate that a little bit off the card. I've got a little bit hanging over, you may or may, or may not be comfortable with that depending on whether you want to put it in an envelope. I'm going to sit this little bit here, I'm going to add some elevation to that section there. I'm going to have these green leaves at the top. So I'm putting that in there. Going around the frame, following the frame, putting that down in there. I didn't put foam dots under that one, it's just flat on the page. I have my little bear next. Normally I'd add cheesecloth and those sort of things in but I'll show you that in the when we get back to the proper bit of the video this is just a little side video and I'm going to need a little extra bit of cardboard there just so I've got two on one side one on the other to keep it even and then should we use that little flower? We might as well. We cut it out. <laughs> Let's add it in. I'll put that one in as well. Just on the side here. All right, so let's take a look at our card now. You can see how all of those elements have layered on to form quite a large cluster of items. And it's really, really pretty, isn't it? I like it a lot. These paper, these um, uniquely creative papers are perfect for this layering and clustering effect. It really are made, all you have to do is just cut them out and paste them on. They're designed beautifully so that you can really layer the elements onto a card, like my perfect. This is exactly what I like to do. I like making cards like this. And it goes really, really well with the frame flourish die. So it's an easy card. So now we are cutting back into our old video. And you can see how I have positioned the 
die cuts and the elements around the corner of the flourish frame. I've also added some cheesecloth in the back there and I'm now looking at adding my little animals and I've got some sentiments that I cut out using the, the die that I showed you earlier. So I'm just adding those in and these are perfect for adding a sentiment to a card. They're very delicate and they work perfectly in these cards. So I love, I love that sentiment die cut and I love how it creates Cuts everything out for you neatly. Don't have to worry about whether they're straight or not. And they've got a variety of, of sentiment sayings, so something for everybody. So just adding on a twine bow. So it's nice to add in a, a twine bow and some cheesecloth because that breaks up the paper layering. So it softens the layers um, and it creates a little bit of different texture for the card. There we go, adding that twine bow on. And then of course you can trim the edges once you get your bow on and you're happy with it. And then our last little card, the little fox one, popping that on and the sentiment. And the twine bow. So they are looking really nice, but you know, you can still go back in and add more if you would like to create a larger cluster of embellishments and die cuts. So you can see these really pretty leaves that I cut out that I'm just adding in because these cards were very special. Tracy was taking these overseas to a special card show. So, you know, I wanted to make these as beautiful um, as they could be and showcase the uniquely product uniquely creative products to the best way that I could so I'm adding in lots and lots and lots of beautiful elements here to um, make my cluster more interesting to look at and you know you could add in as many many elements as you like there's no sort of rules about how many you should have it's it's a personal preference depends on you know what you're making the cards for you might just be making a really quick little birthday card and you may not add in all of these elements or you might be making something really really special like a 50th wedding anniversary card or whatever so you're going to add in a few more so it's completely up to you as to how far you take this process I personally find it very enjoyable so I'm more than happy to layer in as many things as I can So just popping in a little bit inside the circle. And when I glue the ones inside the circle, I'm usually gluing them straight down onto the card so that it creates that layered look as you go up. And you can add in little teeny tiny little bits. The more detail you add, the more sort of intricate the design becomes. And then at the end, you can add some white specks from your paints. Um, or your watercolors or whatever you have to just really finish the card off it looks really good with the little white specks splattered in if you make a mistake you can get a wipe and just smoosh it off I just added some paper and I probably should have done this before I decorated the front but you know you can wait till yours is dry or you can do it carefully like I'm doing it now but yeah just a little bit of paper on the inside so that the card has something pretty to look at when you open it and you can choose paper that you can write over the top of so it's fairly um, you know not so busy paper or you can then add another layer of white cardboard on top of your paper to write your message on. It's up to you. 
And this um, adds some weight to the back of the card as well so that the front isn't sort of really, really heavy and the back has no weight to it. And that's our completed cards. Down below this video is a link to my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au. I will do a blog post showcasing the photographs of these cards so that you can have a closer look. I'll also link to the Uniquely Creative website, which is www.uniquelycreative.com.au, which has all of their amazing products including the Flourish Frame die and the Into the Wild collection. For, so if you would like to purchase some of those products, you can hop through and find them on the internet. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube video, to my YouTube channel, please do so, so that you don't miss out on the next amazing video that's coming up. And I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely crafty day.